Hello, I'm Andrew Hughes. I'm the First Team Loans Player Pathway Manager and I'm here to answer your questions. Lurie Jamie has asked me a question about what surprised me most about this football club when I first came. So I've got two answers for that. The first one is, as a player, uh, I came from Reading at the time where I was on good form and I thought I would come to this club and go straight into the team. Uh, there were some big players at the time, you know, Darren Huckabee, Dean Ashton, etc. And unfortunately, I didn't realise the enormousity of this club and the quality that was here. So, did I perform? No. Did I feel bad about it? Of course, yeah, because I wanted to perform as a player, but I couldn't reach the limits that Norwich City have uh, for standards as a player. Um, and that's one thing that I took with me for the rest of my career was the standards um, of this club and the expectations of the fans. So, enormous city, fabulous fans, uh, unbelievable people around the city, even coming back now many years later uh, in this loans player pathway role, the people cannot be any more welcoming and um, it's just a place where, how can I say it, the people that live here uh, have an identity and they show that with their, their heart on a Saturday, especially the fans. What's changed now as I came back two years ago as the players pathway manager? Uh, well, I'll talk about the club itself. Obviously, the club's had some unbelievable uh, successes to the Premier League and it's had transitions as well as managers and players. But the biggest thing for me is the facilities and the infrastructure of the whole club around the city, what it does for the area, what it does for charity. Unbelievable strides, blown away by it when I walked in. Uh, just the academy, the way they run it, what's been built here as a building, what is carrying on to be built from under nines upwards, right to the top, to the first team how they lead it, um, how the sporting directors lead it and the manager and just the emphasis on football. Some of the young players in the academy um, from when I was a player as a YTS and certainly young players here at Norwich as a YTS don't know how lucky they are. So it's a credit to the club and all the people that are involved in it. Mr Paul Thomas, my favourite memory as a Norwich player was... Good question. Um, captaining Norwich away at Ipswich to a win. Butcher boy Ben, got your question about the soccer bot. I think the thing with the soccer bot is, and a lot with the academy is, a lot of the unbelievable work which goes on, no one really sees. Um, if we talk about the detail that goes into maybe one player or 121 or 118 or even senior players, sometimes it's an organic thing where you'll have senior players, I want to go in the soccer bot, work on 50 first touches and finding a pass. They're the bits which I love. They're the bits which make players players. The extras which no one sees about. Um, the last thing we want to do is shout and scream about, wow, look at us, look what we've got. Everyone knows what we've got. But the soccer bot is an incredible piece of equipment. Um, I was recently in there the other day watching under nines, under eights. Some of the first touches, some of the scanning, some of the things they can do is sensational. And it goes from my day where you just play Wally against a ball and now you can scan. You can have real life situations, real match situations. So um, every day it gets used. Uh, the competition in there is great. Some of the competitions you see are actually better than the competitions or the five sides on a training pitch because uh, players want to compete each against each other about their touches. But just because we don't show it every day um, doesn't mean it's not getting worked. So for me, it's what goes on behind the scenes that creates these players and the touches. Hello, Ray. Uh, you've asked a question, what do I think about the squad so far? Um, it's a good question because asking me, I have my opinions. Also, the new manager has his opinions, but seeing the squad develop over the last two years has been uh, interesting on and off the pitch. Especially I've, uh, I've had my eyes for the last, say, 18 months on the development players and helping them. But what I see now is a squad that is totally determined to do whatever it takes to get results. And for me, that's the main thing. It's the character of the squad. If you ask me about any player, first and foremost, ask me on character before ability. And we've certainly got character in this building. Um, now it's about getting the right idea on the pitch to win as many points as we can to get where we want to be. Hello, Gillo Paul. You've asked a question about Josh Martin. So Josh has had a difficult transition the last few years. So when I came in the building, he'd already agreed to go to MK Downs on loan um, with Russ Martin. He had a really difficult spell there found it really difficult to get into the team. And then Russ obviously le left the club uh, and a new manager come in. Josh then found it 
another difficult stage, but this is all part of his learning career as a young man and as a young player. What he had in his mind uh, to get in that team wasn't working for both clubs. So I had to find a solution and get him out of the club. Uh, we did find a solution in Doncaster last year where he went there and for the last half of the season he was exceptional. Even though Doncaster got relegated, he had uh, 11 or 12 goal involvements, I think five goals and six or seven assists. And then he came back uh, pre-season and obviously the manager of pre-season had watched his clips as he had done with all players that were out on loan. And we needed a squad that was going to fight for every position. And the manager made a decision that Josh needed another loan um, because he'd been in League One. He felt he wasn't ready for, for us, so I have to respect that as a manager. And then I have to get to my job, which was then to help him find another solution. Josh uh, is an exceptional professional um, and he accepted this. And then we found him alone to Barnsley. So Josh has been at Barnsley all season, um, hasn't played as many games as we had liked. So two things. Is that because Josh isn't doing enough to get in the team or is it because Barnsley are flying? Now, this is part as a young footballer that you have to find a way to get in the team. I'm speaking to Duff, the manager, talks about Josh's qualities and what he has. Um, and Josh knows this, I speak to him very regular and he needs to find a way to get into that team. So at the minute, Josh is on a journey where he needs to find a way into Barnsley's team and then we'll make a decision at the end of the season. JB, you've asked the questions about the loans and what is a successful loan. So sometimes an unsuccessful loan can be a success. I.e. if I send Tom Dixon Peters out to Gillingham last year and after one game the manager gets sacked and then suddenly the manager that brought him in isn't in the team. These are feelings and situations that as a young academy player you could never imagine and it's the real world of football. So I'll take this as an example. So Tom goes there, the manager gets sacked and suddenly he's not in the team. That's football. Uh, you can't modicoddle young players uh, and suffocate them with love and lots of positivity. Sometimes they have to have the harsh reality of the game. Uh, it's like a punch in the face. You need to learn how to adapt. Well, he's not done anything wrong, but what do I need to do to oppress the new manager now? So there are players that go out on loans at many other clubs, um, but I look at our club. So successful loans, unsuccessful loans, you know, successful loan is I send out a young player, he plays every single week of every single game, they win a promotion or they get a move. So I'll give you an example, Saxon early at the start of the season, I had a chat with his agent and his agent had expectations that were lower, uh, miles away from what my expectations were. Then I found a manager that I thought suited Saxon's personality first and foremost and trust. And then Saxon goes and plays 25 games in a row for Stevenage, top of the league, then gets a move to a League One club. I think it's an unbelievable success for the academy. It's where Saxon's at at the moment as a player. Um, him and his family are absolutely over the moon. The best bit is Saxon's a Norwich fan. His family are Norwich fans. And to see him develop as a young man in the academy, OK, he hasn't made our first team, but you know what? He's gone into someone else's environment, shown what he's about. And then he's going to got a move to possibly a team that's going to get promoted to the championship. That could be a success. At the minute, we've got John Tompkinson out, Tony Springett, for example, Barley Mumba, all playing in teams fighting for a promotion. Um, and then we have the opposite end of the scale where we maybe send a player to a conference team or a team that's struggling because we want to find a player that can fight. We don't want a player that can have possession all the time. We need to know the other side of the game. First and foremost, the other side of the game, the reactive pressure, the pressing is what our manager wants here more than anything. So successful, unsuccessful, I think any, any loan coming back is successful for me. Um, and sometimes I want an unsuccessful loan because I want players to struggle and I want them to feel what it's really like to be a footballer. Michael, uh, good question about the loans and the stipulations. I wouldn't say the stipulations because we want every player to fight for his place. So I'd never turn around to a club and say 100% he has to start because why should he have to start just because he's come from Norwich? No, every player has to earn his place in the team. Stipulations with contracts, maybe. Maybe if a player hits a certain amount of games or if a club is promoted, then maybe the player is rewarded or maybe our club is rewarded for us loaning the player out. Hi Mike, question about uh, the loans and players and teams are selective. So as a process, I speak to the academy manager, the manager, the sporting director and other coaches and I get a feel for players which are available for loan. 
And then once I have this knowledge in my head, uh, it can change. It can change from one day to another. Uh, I get to work on speaking to managers, speaking to clubs. Um, we put together what's called a loan brochure with positive and negative clips. Um, we put together what's called a loan player passport. So it sounds a bit dramatic, but it's not. We're not giving a passport to leave the country. We're, we're giving a passport to send to clubs with IDPs on it, with individual development plans for players. We're letting managers know certain players need a rollicking, certain players need an arm round them, certain players need working on the left foot, certain players need lots of heading, certain players need to have an elbow in the face, learn what a real tackle is, uh, certain players need to know what it's to fight for points every week, to play for a mortgage at different clubs, different levels. So we have lots of uh, variables uh, but one thing for sure is every player uh, which is available for loan, I'll speak with the coaches where I feel, where their value is and what level we want to get them at. Um, we'll do our best to get them to the highest level. But sometimes it isn't about the highest level, sometimes it is about the manager and the identity of the club and the relationships we have with clubs. Hi Steve, you've asked a question about the National League and goalkeepers. That's probably one for our goalkeeping coach, Ed, to answer. But I'll try and give you an answer to that. There's not many positions available for goalkeepers, um, especially in the Football League. You see most teams have senior players or senior keepers. It's very, very hard to pitch goalkeepers anywhere, especially as you can see with John McCracken. John McCracken went to Ireland for a loan and then came back. We've obviously got Dan Barden out on loan, Sam Blair out on loan, Archie Mayer out on loan, all at lower leagues. One, in lower leagues, you get a lot of direct football, a lot of crosses, uh, a lot of competitiveness and a lot of shots. But I wouldn't say there's a pattern with sending goalkeepers on loan to conference. I'd just say it's very hard to get goalkeepers on loan. And the thing with the goalkeeper is what you want as a goalkeeper on loan, you want lots of shots, lots of crosses, lots of real match practice. So if we can get a keeper on loan, uh, whatever league it is, we'll do that. But at the minute, we're finding it difficult to get young keepers out to league clubs because managers want experience. Question about the loans in the B team. Um, for me, loans... Loans is the best way forward. If you're going to have a B team in another league, um, for me, it'll kill uh, the pyramid of football end of. Um, I went to watch Saxon Early play away at Gateshead in the FA Cup first round uh, for Stevenage. Loved it. Loved the fact that lower league teams get to play conference teams. Um, I think more we could have a relationship with more conference clubs to get the youth loans out. Maybe that's a manoeuvre for us moving forward. But certainly no, uh, the loans for us works and there's nothing like being a young player going out uh, in a first team environment, winning a match and feeling that experience on a Saturday. So for me, we have to push the loans. So I've been asked the question, how does a loan process work? So we send out a loan brochure that our players are available or I'll speak to managers and they'll call me. I'll tell them the players that are available. He might identify a player. He'll have interest in that player. He'll obviously go and do his homework with his clips, try and get information on him. I will go and speak to the player and go, look, um, you're not really going to get in our first team. So how about you go and get in someone else's first team and show us how good you are? So I'll have this chat with the player. Then I will let the sporting director know, Neil and Stu. I will then also let our manager know. I'll let the manager know because obviously he's ultimately got to make the decision whether he's part of the squad or the training group. I'll then this liaise this with blowers um, and the unbelievable people that do a lot of work in the outbuilding which no one ever sees. Um, there's some unbelievable staff in there which helped me out since I've been here, uh, show me details of how to actually put a financial package together for loans. So we'll agree a deal with the club, uh, then the club secretaries will liaise and put a contract in place. Obviously there'll be stipulations in the contract for both parties, i.e. recalls maybe or if a player makes a certain amount of appearances, uh, maybe he gets a bonus or we get a bonus. So there's lots of stipulations in that. The process usually takes um, a couple of hours, depending on the complexity of the move, but usually it's with the staff here and with blowers, it's as smooth as anything. Um, so that's basically how quick it does. Once it's all agreed, um, the player there will then go to the club Maybe he'll be in a hotel or the club might be a year's loan and they'll, they'll find accommodation for him. And then, then we'll follow this player. Every week we'll have people at the games watching the training processes. We'll also have feedback on the players on and off the pitch. 
and each month I'll do a loan committee meeting to all of the academy staff, the sporting directors, the physios, and we'll port back on every single player on and off the pitch. Uh, every single player has his clips. Uh, we also have them clipped and then I'm able to speak with the player uh, over Zoom or face to face, uh, get in the car and drive to whichever club they're at, whichever training ground. I do training ground visits um, because I feel it's fair for the players to still sh show that we care because we do. So whether it's me or Stu or Neil, we will make training ground visits, we'll make player visits and we'll check on the player on and off the pitch. So it's of huge importance to us that when we send a player out, we never just leave the player. We follow the player, um, we follow the games, we follow the tactics and we follow his development. JT, you've asked a question about loan player finances. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you that. <laughs> but what I can tell you is we look at every club, every dynamic of the club, where they're at. And we're realistic with our loan players. We would never not lose a loan due to a financial stipulation. We, train, we, we tend to make loans happen. Um, we'll do it for the best of both clubs and the best for the player. Hi, Craig. You've asked a question about leaving players short um, for years. So I've not seen this because I've not been here for years. Obviously, now I'm back on the first team. I'm on the grass with the manager. Um, we would never not, while I'm at the club or the loans, we've never, I don't feel we've left ourselves short with players. I think sometimes if you have a huge squad, um, in my opinion, it becomes lackadaisy. I think if you have a lean, fit squad, you have players fighting for positions, uh, usually two players for each position. That's what I feel. Uh, I know certainly the manager here likes two players for each position. Uh, we certainly don't like a bloated squad. So uh, for me, I don't think we have left anything short. Uh, we always go through the detail of, of sending a player, the what ifs, the buts, who can play that position, who can come in. So while I'm at the club, we would never send a player on loan and leave ourselves short. I've had a question about, obviously now my role as first team player pathway coach. So obviously I had a relationship with uh, David before. Uh, we worked together at Huddersfield. Uh, I joined David after leaving Crystal Palace. Um, so yeah, worked with him for two and a half, three years. We were quite successful at Huddersfield, but I know the way he works. I know what he sees in a player. I know his sessions with him and Christoph, And then David obviously went to Schalke and Young Boys and I went on my sort of coaching journey in England and then ended up at Norwich. So even before um, David was brought into the club, obviously my job was here at Norwich. Um, and luckily for me, David's come back and then the club have asked me to go back on the grass and kind of make it a dual role, which I'm really enjoying. You earn to gain the trust of the first team players and also the young academy players see you every day and I see them in the building every day. So I can, I can gauge who, who I feel, uh, along with Steve Weaver and the academy staff, who's big enough to step up to our first team because I know the demands of David, I know what he wants, I know what Christoph wants. And also, coaching on the grass, there's not, you know, you, the feeling of coaching on the grass and implementing a match practice and an identity to go into a game on a Saturday and hopefully it comes off and, and win, you know, the winning feeling being able to be part of that and develop players and hopefully a winning situation's brilliant. You, you know, it's the nearest thing you get to playing as being a player. Uh, hopefully we can develop more players, more our identity off and on the pitch. You know, David's done that and Christoph within the five, six weeks. Uh, I think there has been a change, but it's up to the players to take the responsibility of the meetings and the training onto the pitch. And it's up to me to coach that and help that. Now, whether that's on the grass tactically, in meetings, one-to-one, -one, I'll do whatever I can to do it, you know, day in, day out, the hard work of the staff, the chefs, the cleaners. Um, for me, it's, you know, airs on the back of your neck when you see how hard people work here, it really is. And it makes you want to get better and it makes you also realise that everyone that works here is fans, they're fans of Norwich. And you obviously want to reward the fans that are at Carrow Road every week and the away support. And the only way to do that is on the training pitch. And I feel the harder you work, the luckier you get. So hopefully we'll keep putting in the hard work on the grass and we'll get some luck at the end of the season. Thanks for all your questions. I hope, it, I hope it's uh, provided an insight into our loans uh, on and off the pitch. And I tried to answer them as honestly as I could. Um, so I hope you've understood that.